wonderful change, the wonderful change. Pray with me, if you will, God, for this worship experience. We say thank you for the change that still blesses us to this day and forevermore. We say thank you. It wasn't us, God. It was nobody but your son, Jesus, comes in on the inside and makes all things new. God, for these young people, we say thank you for their demonstration of faith and worship. We bless your name. Thank you for the youth workers and the pastors, preachers, everybody who pours into them. Jesus said we need to become more like them to understand the kingdom of God. God, thank you for looking beyond a preacher's faults, seeing us at our need that we can share in the best good news we ever heard. And that is you love us and you love us unconditionally. And there's nothing that can change your unfailing love. In Jesus' precious name, amen. While you're up, come on and thank me for your pastor. Thank God for your pastor. Come on, you can do better than that. I'm talking about your pastor. Come on, I'm talking about your pastor. I'm talking about your pastor. Going on 29 years of faithful pastoring. He's got awards named after him now. I'm going to try to get that award one day. I can say it's the Uncle Benny Award. Won't nobody know what I'm talking about. I'll know. And you know if I got an Uncle Benny, thank me. Thank God for you. My Aunt Michelle, your first lady. My cousin Colleen is here. Thank God for her. Amen. I got some family here. My big sister's here. My nephew, Camille and Jalen, throw your hands up one time for me. family is here. Come on and turn with me to this 23rd Psalm. See if we can get some fresh water from an old well. Did you enjoy worship? Amen. Thank God for this wonderful music ministry. The kids, the praise team, everybody, they sang, 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 sang. S-A-N-G. Pardon me, this, this is the NIV version is what I told the guy who asked me about my text but you know some things just sound better the way you learned them so some of this Miss Susanna will be a combination of, of King James and NIV I'm gonna try to do the best I can but that's just that's just y yay though I walk just sounds better I'm sorry it, I, I can't come off of it the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want God makes me to lie down in green pastures. God leads me beside quiet waters. God refreshes my soul. God guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk, yea, though I walk through the darkest valley, through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. You may be seated. Let's share together from this subject. I want to talk about faithing your feelings. Faithing your feelings. I want to let you know where the origin of this sermon came from on this Youth Sunday. All of our precious K through 12s. The biggest enemy they will fight is not white supremacy. It is unbelief. If you understand the ways in which atheism is on the rise. If you understand the ways in which unbelief is being substituted as real religion, if you understand the ways in which people are turning towards unbelief, everything they read on social media, things they come across online on YouTube, you'll understand it's not white supremacy. It's not Jim Crow. It's not 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. It is unbelief that God and the things of God are not real. So I just stopped by to remind you, you got to faith your feelings. What has been your favorite social media challenge? There's been so many. You've participated 
and a handful of them. There are challenges on social media that unite us all across with our relatives, friends, and family all over the world. There's people who do social media challenges in every country on God's green earth. What has been your favorite one? Was it the mannequin challenge? Was it the ice bucket challenge, raising money for ALS research? You remember the ice bucket challenge, didn't you? Some of you went to go take a hot shower right after you did it. What was your favorite social media challenge? Is it the running man challenge? You remember the running man challenge? Don't do it right now, but you remember the running. Social media has so many challenges. What has been your favorite? Can I tell you mine, my favorite social media challenge to every teenager in here? It was the In My Feelings challenge. That thing took off. It's still going on. There's still people doing the shiggy dance. Come on, all my teenagers, you know what I'm talking about. The In My Feelings challenge. When that thing first hit back in the summer of 2018 in 2.5 million hashtags, Drake's name or the dance Shiggy's name or the in my feelings challenge was mentioned in two weeks 2.5 million mentions in two weeks 2.5 million mentions. chances are you had one or two of those mentions in there the in my feelings challenge YouTube and see what it's all about and it's funny because Drake must have been on to something because as he hit the in my feelings challenge there were other artists that started coming out with songs about being in their feelings and there's been a whole lot of R&B songs about being in your feelings so deep in my feeling you've heard it so deep in my feeling can't control my anxiety so deep in my feelings we're a long ways away from that opening line in that Frank Beverly and May song happy feelings in the air come on you know the rest of it touching people everywhere we are a long ways away from that now it's in my feelings so deep so deep so deep can't control my anxiety that's not poetry she sings that in the song so deep in my feelings every teenager I need you to feel me at the outset of the sermon because any honest adult would be able to tell you this your life and lifestyle can be determined by the amount of time you spend in your feelings or the amount of time you invest in your faith come on you know money language by now spend means that there's nothing really coming back to you it's spending it's it's going away but if you invest in your faith the benefits will bless your life. The result of staying in your feelings can hurt people and hurt yourself. Feelings are shifty like the weather as the season changes. One day it's 68 degrees, the next day it's 52 degrees. Feelings can be moody. Feelings can be like President Trump at best. It doesn't matter what's on the teleprompter. It doesn't matter what speech has been prepared for him. If he feels like saying it, it's just going to come out by itself. It's moody. Feelings are moody. He's so deep in his feelings stick with me church come on feelings are the expressions of emotions like math math is the big category and addition and algebra are expressions of math that's what our feelings our feelings are simply expressions of our emotions and how we choose to express our feelings feelings like sad mad and glad is everything because feelings can have such a strong impact whether negative or positive are you still with me on this we can drift in and out of our feelings we can drift in and out of our feelings but we drive our faith oh I know you might not have your license yet but you do know what drive means drive means I'm moving forward why because faith is not a feeling faith is a decision you know what it means to drive you've got to move forward 
I had a bad class period, fourth period, but I'm moving forward. Fifth period is coming up. I know I was bullied last week, but I'm moving forward. This week is a new week. I didn't get as many A's as I wanted to get, but I'm moving forward. It's a new marking period. I know I was trolled on social media. I know I was laughed at because somebody didn't think my shoes were fly enough and fresh enough, but I'm moving forward because faith is going to drive you ahead. I don't want to fight my feelings because I need to be honest and clear with myself. But I don't want to feed my feelings because if they're negative, they can lead to regrets. But I need to faith my feelings because I can faith my feelings and move forward. Faithing your feelings is challenging, but the benefits will bless your life. When I faith my feelings I focus on how much God means to me and how much I mean back to God that's the sum total of faith in your feelings and Psalm 23 is the best example a little old preacher can give you on what it means to faith your feelings first and foremost notice that there are no questions in the 23rd Psalm David raises questions all throughout the Psalm who shall dwell in your holy place who shall ascend to your high hill he raises questions all throughout the psalm notice there's not one question in the 23rd psalm remember faith is not a feeling faith is a decision and he makes the decision in the 23rd psalm to faith his feelings and move forward knowing that the Lord is his shepherd if you want to know how it works first thing you need to know is you've got to be able to finish that statement the Lord is my you got to be able to put something on the back of it you got to be able to personalize it come up with some comparison to be able to finish the Lord is my throughout the Psalms David finds different ways to finish the statement the Lord is my the Lord is my light and my salvation the Lord is my rock and my fortress all throughout the Psalms he finds a way to finish that statement the Lord is my if I'm gonna faith my feelings I've got to find a way to be able to express how much God means to me can we try some examples out the Lord is my phone charge me up at night charge me up at night charge me on the move he's got a portable charger named the Holy Spirit don't let my battery die the Lord is my phone Lord can charge me up and then Lord hold me keep me in your hand don't let me fall hold me tight I heard you got the whole world in your hands you've got to be able to finish that statement the Lord is my and then it says you're my phone God send me messages tell me that I am the way tell me that I am tell me that I am a child of God tell me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper tell me that you know the plans you have for me plans not to harm me but plans to give me a hope and a future tell me that you've forgiven all my sins am I talking to anybody in here who receives messages from God all day long why because the Lord is like my phone can I keep pushing the Lord is like my snapchat it's a youth Sunday it's a youth sermon the Lord is like my snapchat snapchat lets you have these filters filters make me look better than what I truly am that's what the blood of the lamb does for us come on I'm trying to preach this thing that's what the blood does in God's eyes it makes us look better than what we truly are not only do you have filters on snapchat but snapchat will let you do some artwork yeah that if faith is your foundation snapchat lets you add some creativity and uniqueness to your own life yeah faith is the foundation but somebody can testify that God will let you add your own signature to your life and let you add your own style to your life so you don't have to be like anybody else I was fearfully and wonderfully made snapchat will let you add some artwork to your own life this thing called life 
doesn't have to be boring you can spice it up with your own creativity and your own uniqueness and then what I like about it the most the Lord is like my snapchat in less than 24 hours that thing has got to disappear and it doesn't matter who goes looking for it it doesn't matter who thinks they can use it against me once God says it's forgiven once God makes it disappear ain't nothing anybody else can do about it the Lord is like my snapchat can I go one more uh, the Lord is like my hairdresser or my barber I come in as is I come in just as I am no matter how bad it looks no matter how long it's been why because you won't judge me doesn't matter what kind of danger if I got going on doesn't matter how bad it looks Colleen you won't judge me and I keep coming to you because only you can make it right I tried to handle this thing by myself I couldn't do anything with it I'm coming to you because you can make it right in fact that's why I keep coming back because you've done such a wonderful job I really didn't know what you were doing at first I didn't know how much you were cutting over there and snipping over there every now and then your timing gets on my nerves but when the end result comes I'm so glad I waited on you. I'm so glad I let you have my life. I'm so, in fact, that's why I talk openly about you. That's why I recommend you to other people. That's why I post about you on social media because I've seen what you can do. You've got to be able to finish the statement, the Lord is mine. David said the Lord is my shepherd he's he's faithing his feelings after you finish a personal statement of faith you need to know how God is positioned in geography in the 23rd Psalm at the end of the Psalm it says goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life good mercy will follow me closely I'm not talking about far behind I'm talking about right behind you like stalking you it will it will goodness and mercy will stalk you all the days of your life the middle of the psalm says during my darkest moments in life I don't have to fear because you are with me you are with me you are side on side I can't move because you have locked me into your grace and your providence and your will I can't move the Lord is with me but there's something to be said about the double reference to God's leading at the beginning of the song God leads me beside quiet waters God leads me along the right path look at it God is behind me once good mercy follows me God is beside me once during the roughest times of my life God is right beside me but God is before me leading me twice are you with me on this God leads me beside the quiet waters because he knows how nervous and intimidating life can be God leads me along the right path because I represent God's reputation God's name is on the line given how I live the question then becomes why is God before me why is God in front of me more than God is beside me or behind me every teenager I need you to look me dead in the eye the answer is this it's because God loves to lead your life Oh God, it puts a smile on your heavenly Father's face when God can get out in front of your life. Out in front, out in front. Not you taking charge, but let God get out in front. At school, out in front. On social media, can God get out in front? Can God get the first post of your day? At church, can God get out in front? in front sometimes you can go on your cell phone during worship no that's putting God behind you can God get out in front promise coming up somebody needs to know that you don't have to take that weekend off but even during prom weekend you can keep God what out in front that's why we pray the way we do that's why we start prayers with adoration and acknowledgement of who God is and who God is as the sovereign God of the universe why because we want to make sure we get God out 
in front before we start asking for anything. What I love about the Psalms are the amount of times where the psalmist simply asked God to lead him more than 30 times in the Psalms. You find references to how God leads his life. I like how it's put in Psalm chapter 25. Lead me in your truth and teach me. He said, I'll wait for you all the day long. I need to talk to some teenager all the day long. You're going to wait for God all the day long. You're going to wait for God all day long. What did the psalmist know to make him write those words? Lead me in your truth. God, I'll wait for you all the day long because he knew it's better for me to sit still right where I am than to try to rush out and get in front of you. He said, I'll wait for you all day. And the good news is, if God is out in front of your life, he can handle whatever is coming your way. God can't handle it behind. If God's out in front, he can fight some stuff off. He can swat some flies. He can make sure the devil doesn't kill, steal, and destroy. Am I talking to anybody who's learned what it means to make sure God is out in front of your life? There's a story in the book of Exodus about God leading the children of Israel out of slavery in Egypt. The children of Israel didn't know how they would arrive at their destination they knew the place where God wanted to lead them. We call that the promised land. But they didn't know which way God would direct them to lead them to the promised land. And the Bible says that God chose to use a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night to lead them to their destination in life. Don't miss it. God refused to let 24 hours go by without being out in front of their lives leading and directing them i need somebody to get that in your spirit turn and tell somebody i ain't gonna let a day go by come on i ain't gonna let a day go by without making sure god is out in front leading my life i've tried it my own way i've tried being my own boss i've tried being doing things my way but i've learned and through it all to lean on God because if I lean on God he will direct my path that's leadership that's God who directs your paths young people where does God want to lead you since God leads twice as much as God is beside you or behind you where does God want to lead your life number one God always wants to lead you into love especially if it means you got to forgive somebody god always wants to lead you towards peace even if it means you can't say what's on your mind god will always lead you towards hope because there's still enough evidence in life on a day-to-day -day basis to trust in a god you have never seen before god will always lead you to the truth because jesus said the truth will set you free you got to let God out in front of your life there's confidence in knowing that God wants to lead your life faithing my feelings focusing on how much God means to me and how much I mean to God you got to do one more thing not only do you have to finish the statement the Lord is mine not only do you have to find a way to let God out in front in your life to let God have the driver's seat and you go to the back seat lastly faithing your feelings helps you look towards the future surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life all the days of my life turn to somebody and tell them all means all 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 me all the days of my life literally as long as I live I plan to let goodness and mercy follow me that's what the psalmist is trying to say the psalmist is older he's not 
he's not elderly but he's a little older now and David in 23rd Psalm he's he's looking back at his life he's probably in his late 40s and early 50s he's looking back at his life and he's able to see the ways in which God has been there every step of the way and some teenager some young person needs to know that whatever loving and caring and trusting experiences you have had with God up until now you can take those and draw faith conclusions about the future somebody may be saying Keenan I haven't been feeling God's love as of late I haven't been feeling close to God like I used to feel I don't feel God's warmth like I used to I've had some circumstances that have caused me to question as if God is as good as the 23rd Psalm seems to suggest but I come bearing good news James chapter 1 says God is the father of lights and he does not change like the shifting shadows if God said I'll be with you to the end that's exactly what God means if God said I crowned you just a little lower than the angels if God said it I'm a trusted and believe it if God said I'll provide I'm gonna believe it if God said I'll protect I'm gonna believe it if God said my providence and my peace are gonna go with you then I'm going to believe exactly what God said uh, can I paint a picture about what the experts say the future will be like? Since we're talking about living all the days of my life, I'm talking to some teenager. You got to think about what the year 2030 and 2035 and the year 2040, what will that be like? Because you still got to walk by faith and not by sight. Imagine technology so in sync with your brain and body that bio glasses can create anything that your mind can think of. That's what they say the future will be like. Imagine biological software updates and upgrades moving from the internet to brain net. Imagine artificial intelligent robots being smarter than us. Talk to me if you can, somebody. Imagine medical machines that can smell your breath and diagnose early diseases. Imagine owning a pet that's a mix between a Nigerian tiger and a German shepherd because of genetic engineering. Imagine flawless food because vertical farming skyscrapers will grow plants without either water or soil. I'm trying to give you a glimpse into what the future is going to be like. Imagine smart toilets that are able to digest your meal plans based on what you flush down the toilet. They say they're on the way. Imagine virtual and augmented reality that allows you to visit people on the other side of the globe while sitting in your bed. I said all that to say this as I take my seat. I don't know what the future will be like, but I do know who holds the future. And because he holds the future, all my fears are gone because he holds the future. I know I can walk in confidence that God will take care of me. Every teenager needs to know, I don't know what the future will be like. I don't know who the next big rapper will be. I don't know what the next Marvel movie will be. But as long as God sits high and looks low, I'm going with God. So I choose to faith my feelings because faith means I'm moving forward. I choose to faith my feelings because faith means I'm moving forward. I choose to faith my feelings because faith means I'm moving forward. And without faith, it is impossible to please my God. Am I talking to anybody in here who's made it up in their mind, old or young, male or female? I'm walking by faith and not by sight the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he's going to make me lie down in green pastures he will restore your soul he will lead you along the right path because god's name is on the line during the darkest moments of your life god will be right there let god out in front of your life he has surely goodness and mercy are coming right behind god talk to me if you can they're coming right behind God and all the days of your life God's gonna look after you God's gonna take care of you 
God's going to make sure you got food on the table, clothes on the back. God's going to make sure the devil can't get to you. God's going to make sure the blood still works. I'm done. It was a youth sermon. If you ever want to know, if you, if you ever want to know what faith in your feelings is like, you've got to go back to Jesus in the garden. Jesus looks at the cup. He's praying in the garden. And he sees the pain and the torture and the suffering and the agony he would have to endure because he was about to die for your sins and mine. And he asked God, if this cup can pass for me. In other words, God, can I escape my reality? Why do I have to die for Kenan Thomas? Why do I have to die for the people at Pilgrim Church? And God never answers Jesus. You have to understand how unique this is. God goes back and forth with Abraham in the Old Testament about finding one righteous person in Sodom and Gomorrah. Literally, God and Abraham negotiate in order to find one righteous person. You got to understand that God gave Paul some heavenly revelations and then the devil gave him a thorn in his flesh and he asked God three times, take the thorn away from me and God answers him all three times. No, no, no. God why didn't you answer your own son? He gave Jesus the space and the grace to faith his own feelings. And by the time Jesus was finished faithing his own feelings, he gave this answer right here. Not my will, but your will be done. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. Come on. Come on. Faith your feelings. Let me, let me just kind of help somebody simplify it. Don't rely on your feelings, but stand on your faith. sense faith urging up I mean feelings urging reject the feelings and embrace faith you're here man woman boy or girl you're not in Christ you're not in church we extend the invitation to you to come right now come come and give the Lord your heart Bible is clear it says without faith it's impossible to please God somebody ought to have faith in Jesus right now that he'll save you somebody ought to have faith in Jesus to know that he'll turn your life around somebody ought to have enough faith in, in Jesus to know that he's better than anything else that you could ever engage in and be a part of in this world. Is there one man, woman, boy, or girl in the balcony on the main floor? Help me today. Turn to somebody and tell them Jesus is the way. He's the way. Jesus is the way. And all you need to do is come, 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 my brother, come, my sister. Jesus is the way. He's the truth and he's the life. You're here. I will. Man, woman, boy, your girl. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Let Jesus be the Lord of your life. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. You're here. Maybe you're here and you're, you're saved, but you're not connected to 
to a church you're not you don't have a covering you're, you're not faith walking with other believers you're here today we extend the invitation for you to come Chris is coming for prayer we're praying who's that that individual that will say yes preacher I, I need a covering I can't make it by myself I need some help I need some some support I need I need to do this and I'm gonna keep on doing it till I get it right come on you're here today come on man come on I will forward. Bless you, bless you. Come on, church, pray. Somebody may be on your road. Somebody may be in front of you. Somebody behind you. Somebody beside you. Praise God. Come on, come on, come on. Tell somebody, this is the Sunday to get it right. Turn to somebody and tell them, this is the Sunday to get it right. I don't know where you are. This is the Sunday to get it right. You can get it right today. I will. Forward. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, put your hands Put your hands together for what the Lord has done. God bless you. Let's praise God for those who are here. Amen. God is good. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Amen. If you just take your seats, we want to lift. Amen. Those who have come in prayer and believe that all of them are members. And so we want to just kind of pray with them and pray for them, okay? All right. Amen. Some of them have been away, but they, they're, they're coming back and they're reconnecting, right? If that's you, just could nod at me reconnecting just nod at me praise God I receive that I receive that in the name of Jesus Amen. now if there's something that we need to do with you and for you to reconnect just let me know all right we want to do that we want to help you out okay and so let's pray together would you take your neighbor's hand Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you today. We thank you and we praise you for those who have made their way down the aisle. They've come, God, based on the appeal that some of them have been disconnected from you. Life and living, the world has somehow drawn them away. They're coming today, God, recognizing that that's not really where you want them to be. But they want you to draw you want them to draw closer to you. I pray right now. I pray for each and every one of them under the sound of my voice. That they would have a closer walk with you. Touch them and bless them, God, and make a way for them. Right now, you are right now, God. Not next week, not tomorrow, not next month, but right now, God. Establish their going. We thank you and we praise you, God, for their courage and their boldness. Now, God, build a hedge around them. Somehow, some way, God, we pray, God, that they will not repeat the prior experiences. But, God, that they will begin to have a sweet journey with you. We bless you, God. And may they be reminded with the words the preacher preached that they will, amen, recognize faithing their feelings, that they will fake things out, God. Whatever it might be, may they do it by faith. 
in Jesus name I commit them to you and the people of God said amen amen and amen come on and give them all a praise God bless you God bless you praise God good to see you guys good to see you Come on, ushers. Amen. Come, ushers. Amen. Quickly, quickly. They should be lined up. They should have been lined up. Amen. Come on, come on. We want to be a blessing to our preacher today. Were you blessed by the word? Were you blessed by the word today? Amen tremendous reminder amen tremendous reminder for all of us as we engage life as we move through this world amen we allow our feelings to be led by our faith amen father we thank you for this preacher thank you for the word that we receive pray your blessings upon him that you would continue to give him clarity of mind Help us to think in a relevant way, God, to make your word practical. We appreciate it. Help us, God, to be the faith people you're calling us to be. Now, we bless him today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God.
like y'all ready to go. Amen. Amen. If you can't stand up, at least you can just kind of. You know what that's called? Participation. Amen. That's it. That's it. Yeah, you can at least put your hands together. Bless you. Bless you. Y'all stay right there.